The 10th annual The Last of Us Day passed last week without any news on the future of the franchise. Whilst this wasn't a surprise, it did mean that the window for Naughty Dog to deliver on their promise of news about the planned standalone The Last of Us multiplayer in 2023 continued to shrink, and the most recent news of layoffs at the company and the project reportedly being on ice appears to have closed off the possibility entirely. News on exactly what has been going on at Naughty Dog is hard to come by. The studio has said scant little directly, offering only breadcrumbs when it comes to what comments they have put out. Leaks and rumours, of course, need to be taken with a huge pinch of salt, and news coverage in turn is mostly rehashing the rumours and filling space, making anything substantial hard to pass. Having said that, what I've gleaned from the available information leaves some cause for concern. The biggest fear, of course, is that the multiplayer has been cancelled. But even before the most recent reports of the game being on ice, there was significant concern that if the product did release, then it would be taken over by demands for trend chasing and excessive monetization in the wake of PlayStation's purchase of Bungie and pivot towards live service as part of its business plans. Before we go any further, it's worth noting that Naughty Dog have recently, alongside other PlayStation Studios, adopted a policy of not revealing information on games too far ahead of release. This is aimed at not artificially creating unnecessary external pressure on the developers and reducing crunch, which I had originally written had to be a good thing, especially in the current context where, despite record-breaking profits, huge studios are making massive layoffs. But it was not long after I'd written and recorded that version of the script that the news about layoffs at Naughty Dog broke. All of these negative business practices, crunch based on unreasonable deadlines, layoffs even with million and billion dollar profits, and excessive monetization through microtransactions, go hand in hand, which is why I'm making this video not as an entitled consumer who simply wants a product sooner rather than later, no matter the cost, but as someone concerned that what we have heard about why we're not getting news points in an extremely negative direction, not just for this game and its quality, but also the overall direction of the industry. The same people peppering games with predatory microtransactions and pushing games out before they're ready are the ones who are also consolidating massive profits with cyclical rounds of layoffs of staff they've often crunched virtually to burnout. After all, those who make games and those who play them have the same enemy. Jason Schreier reported for Bloomberg back in May that developments on The Last of Us multiplayer have been scaled back following a request by Sony for Bungie to evaluate the game. The Destiny developers reportedly suggested the game wouldn't be able to maintain player engagement for an extended period. Of course, Player engagement could mean any number of things, including genuine player enjoyment rather than just player spending. So let's take a few steps back and look at how we got here. Ever since Uncharted 2, Naughty Dog has included an online multiplayer mode with all of its released games, until Uncharted The Lost Legacy and The Last of Us Part 2 broke that trend. Although 2019 saw the closure of servers for the Uncharted 2 and 3 multiplayers and the PS3 version of Factions, the PS4 version of Factions and the Uncharted 4 multiplayer both have a small but dedicated player base. Enough so that the lack of an updated version in either the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection or The Last of Us Part 1 Remake caused considerable ire. Focusing on Factions specifically, the game on launch came with three modes, all of which pitted two teams of four players against each other. Two involved one team having to be the first to wipe out the other, whilst the third mode, less popular, requires being the first team to capture a lockbox. Naughty Dog launched the multiplayer with seven maps, and in the space of half a year or so added a further 10 through 3 DLC updates. There are also multiple purchasable cosmetics on the PlayStation Store. However, beyond that there were no updates and the game in 2023 as much as it was in 2014, albeit with a player base including many whose hours in the game are beyond count. At any time of day or night, if you boot up The Last of Us Remastered and fancy a match, you can very quickly find one. As late in The Last of Us Part 2's development cycle as 2018, the game was supposed to host a sequel to Factions which would by and large offer the same experience but with the maps, graphics and gameplay of Part 2. Ripped files from Part 2 suggest that a Battle Royale mode was due to be included. Had this come to fruition, it would likely have had the same life cycle, a few content updates early on before being kept alive by an active and passionate, if relatively small, player base. It was September 26, 2019 when Naughty Dog confirmed that Part 2 would launch without multiplayer. They stated then that the vision of the multiplayer team grew beyond an additional mode to be packaged alongside the single player, and that although it wouldn't come with Part 2, fans could experience it eventually when it was ready. Job listings in 2021 showed that the studio was aggressively hiring for the multiplayer and confirmed that this would be their first standalone multiplayer game. Co-game director Vinit Agarwal tweeted that the new recruits would be part of bringing the cinematic experience between players in our new standalone multiplayer action game. The job descriptions also stated that they were looking for the same level of ambition and quality of our signature story-driven games to this unique multiplayer project. 
Another clue about the nature of the game came from PlayStation Studios head Herman Hulst, who in a Q&A on the PlayStation blog said, who says that multiplayer experience cannot have great stories, right? Whilst this wasn't specifically about The Last of Us multiplayer, many took it as a veiled reference. Rumours continued to fly about the game from a variety of sources, some more credible than others. At the point when rumours of a Last of Us remake, which of course turned out to be true, were at their height, some saying this were also stating that the multiplayer would be more heavily story driven and open world, rather than based upon matches. Comparisons were even made to the survival MMO the day before, at a point when it was actually believed to be a real game in development. Rather than an elaborate scam to lure people towards developer Fantastic so that they could sell other products. Obviously, the fact that the remake came to be doesn't mean that this version of the multiplayer will, but it certainly provoked interest. At Summer Game Fest 2022, when revealing the first piece of concept art for the game, Neil Druckmann appeared to confirm that there was an element of truth at least when he said the game was It's as big as any of our single player games that we've done and in some ways bigger. And that it would have a story. Um, the way we're telling that story is very unique to this game. This was reiterated in a January 2023 update that shared more concept art, where Druckmann wrote, With a team led by Vinita Garwal, Joe Pedinati and Anthony Newman, the project is shaping up to be a fresh new experience from our studio, but one rooted in Naughty Dog's passion for delivering incredible stories, characters and gameplay. Game industry insider Jeff Grubb later said in a giant bomb live stream. The reason they got delayed, the reason this isn't just factions, um, for one, they wanted to make it more ambitious, make it more of a, its own thing. Um, but then also they wanted to spend a lot of time building out the specific technology so that they could do a live service game in a Naughty Dog way, which means like making it very easy for them to create new content and then just slot it in without you having to download a lot of stuff. They're going to make it very easy to keep it updated and stuff and adding new content. So ahead of the news of the game being internally delayed and scaled back in May and apparently on ice of, as of 3rd of October, this is what we knew. The game had evolved beyond PvP matchmaking into something which, while still a live service, would have a narrative focus. Given Naughty Dog's history of delivering multiplayers which produce long-term dedicated fans even without updates, the promise of something rooted in the ethos that makes their single-player games so appealing and with delivery of new content built into the development plan, the idea that the game lacked longevity becomes harder to swallow. Perhaps their work on the new tech to deliver this was too costly and not progressing fast enough for those holding the pair strings. But if that were the case, then why scale back the project rather than continue development but deliver new content in the old-fashioned way? This brings us on to Sony's new focus on live service in its business model. In May 2023, a business presentation declared the company's intent to shift from 88% of its studio investment going towards single-player games, as it did in its 2019 fiscal year, to 60% for live service by the fiscal year 2025. As part of that shift, there are currently 12 live service games in production at PlayStation. This follows acquisitions such as Bungie, Haven Studios and Firewalk Studios all of whom have a focus and expertise on live service. At the PlayStation Showcase also in May, we saw some of the fruits of this. Bungie are producing a new PvP extraction shooter called Marathon. Firewalk Studios are working on a PvP FPS called Concord. And Haven is making a PvP heist game called Fair Games. The lay of the land here is clear enough. Whilst what we've learned of Naughty Dog's project includes delivering new content to players, there's no indication that this new content can be quickly and easily mass-produced for instant fiscal gratification, unlike the upcoming extraction, heist and FPS efforts from recent acquisitions, which will no doubt be laden with both cosmetic and potentially pay-to-win microtransactions to show your credit card a good time. The PlayStation business presentation was absolutely clear about this. It presented add-on content as a growth opportunity which, alongside subscriptions, although the estimated growth there wasn't quite as stark, would squeeze digital full game purchases. And whilst there's so much more that can be said on this point in general, specifically for The Last of Us multiplayer, it adds weight to the assumption that Bungie's intervention is not for the best here. As an aside, this wouldn't even be the first time that Sony chasing a quick buck has had the potential to ruin The Last of Us. Neither the PS5 remake of the original game nor the PC port were initially in Naughty Dog's hands. We never saw what state a Tealu remake from Sony's visual arts service group would have launched in, but we certainly saw the mess that the Steam version initially emerged as in Iron Galaxy's hands. At that same May presentation, Sony estimated that its PC revenue would leap from $250 million in 2022 to $450 million in 2023. This may still be on course, and certainly overall it's good to see a wider audience getting to play these games but cutting corners for a quick buck will only serve to harm the developer's reputation and hair purchases in the longer term. Hopefully Sony will learn that lesson on the PC front. 
but sadly multiplayer seems to be one arena where putting profits over quality is still easy to get away with and flush down the memory hole. But if you want to see where shallow trend chasing in multiplayer leads, look no further than Resident Evil. Like Naughty Dog, Capcom has a franchise with a passionate fan base eager to share the experience online. They're even a step ahead in that they have seen what a popular cooperative multiplayer with serious longevity looks like. The PS2 era outbreak games are not only still alive, but actively thriving today on fan run servers. Yet, with the release of the Resident Evil 3 remake, the multiplayer companion they chose to go for was Resistance, an asymmetrical 4v1 survival game clearly meant to cash in on the popularity of Dead by Daylight. The game wasn't without promise, an initial fan dismissal of the game was to a degree unfair, but this in no way absolved Capcom of responsibility for its lack of support from the very start, where it had no crossplay and no dedicated servers being hosted by the Mastermind player, or the fact that they simply stuck a bunch of microtransactions and loot boxes in, then stopped supporting the game just four months after launch. Following this, the PvP Battle Royale was the next trend in Capcom's sites, with Reverse. After a poorly received beta, the game was delayed over a year before being released in virtually the same state, with pre-existing content held back for updates, which increased the amount of in-game content from next to nothing to not a lot, while still burying the title in microtransactions. Of course, Sony has a clear live service business plan which means their approach won't be so haphazard as Capcom's, but that doesn't mean that trend chasing and microtransactions don't take priority over what fans of The Last of Us want when it comes to the multiplayer. And whilst there's certainly a hardcore who will happily take more of the old factions with updated maps, graphics and mechanics, Naughty Dog's vision appeared to be aimed at drawing their single player fans into the multiplayer. The shift from PvP and Battle Royale to story focused and likely co-op gameplay would absolutely have done that for me and many others. As for content, extrapolating from everything said about the game publicly and hinted at by various sources, post-apocalyptic San Francisco with a co-op story campaign, open world MMO elements and PvE and PvP game modes would certainly have offered something for everyone. But we'll never know what that looks like now, it seems, because even if the game hasn't been cancelled, it's certainly been scaled back and delayed, perhaps indefinitely. It could be that the motives behind Bungie's review were benign. Looking to Destiny 2 General Manager Justin Truman's GDC talk, from box products to live service, a lot of what he talks about seems to be rooted in delivering exactly the kind of project that Naughty Dog appear to want to bring to life. But in that talk, he says that releasing games and fixing their problems in the wild is preferable to delaying games to polish them, which is clearly at odds with what has happened here. And even beyond the clear monetization motives from those pulling the levers at Sony, this talk also speaks negatively of the over-delivery of AAA games in favour of patterns and blueprints that can be reused. That doesn't automatically mean that sheer quantity of new content is achieved by sacrificing quality and especially originality, but it's certainly a possibility, and it's something that would likely clash with Naughty Dog's desire to bring their bespoke narrative style into the multiplayer space. When originally writing this script, I didn't want to be naysaying the development of The Last of Us multiplayer. I was certainly crossing everything for the delay and Bungie's involvement to be in favour of delivering something that justifies Naughty Dog's single player fans taking an interest as much as existing factions fans. I genuinely hoped that I was wrong when making predictions based upon the direction of travel in Sony with respect to multiplayer and live service, but it would seem that the latest news has cemented a lot of my, and other fans, worst fears. Perhaps after all of this, the best we can hope for is a conversation which sees more support for the jobs and welfare of development staff, without whom we can't expect any product at all of course, let alone a quality one, and in turn a more concerted pushback against the practices of an industry which, despite massive and growing profits, is visibly eating itself. Now I want to know what you think. Is The Last of Us multiplayer something you've been looking forward to? What type of multiplayer do you tend to play and do you want from The Last of Us? Do you think the latest news is the final nail in the coffin for the game, or is there still hope? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. This is a Patreon and member supported channel, so if you want to become a member and unlock custom badges and emojis, early access to my videos, and your name in the credits, then click the join button below. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time!